Hi everybody, this is Lara from Elliott Wave Gold with an updated analysis for Bitcoin for you on Thursday the 19th of August. This is the last time that I'll be putting this on the same day I prepare the analysis on the YouTube channel for free. As of next week, Bitcoin is going to be something I analyse every week on a regular basis, probably on a Monday when I have the weekly candlestick ready for uh, as part of a paid subscription. If you want to get a grandfather rate to that service, which involves once a week analysis of Bitcoin, S&P 500, gold and oil, you can get a grandfather rate for the first 24 hours after we launch our new website, pureelliotwave.com. So go over to pureelliotwave.com and provide your email address to be notified of the launch. Okay, let's get into it. The situation for Bitcoin, this analysis really hasn't changed since last week, but there's a little bit of detail on the daily chart I'll go through in terms of Elliott Wave when, the, when we get there. The classic technical analysis situation is looking bullish for the immediate term, which supports the Elliott Wave counts. Elliott Wave analysis first, classic analysis last. The monthly chart looks at the entire history of Bitcoin from this low down here, to this high, I'm seeing a five wave impulse complete for cycle wave one, a zigzag complete for cycle wave two, which was an 84% correction of cycle one. This chart is on a semi log scale, and the extreme volatility of this market squishes the top of the chart up. So it doesn't really show you how deep these corrections really are. That's why I've put these notations on the chart to show you the percentage or proportion of these corrections of the previous upward wave. So an impulse for one, a zigzag for two, an impulse for three underway. I may need to move the degree of labelling within cycle three down one degree in coming months. We'll see how this one unfolds. I think when four is over and five is underway, I'll probably then have to have two wave counts with this labelling and another labelling seeing this is just primary wave one. But for now, I will leave it as is. Here, primary wave 3 is a lot longer than primary wave 1. Here, this primary degree third wave also was a lot longer than this first. It was 38.87 times the length of primary 1. And then primary wave 5 was 15.87 times the length of primary wave 3. The fifth wave for Bitcoin is usually, within the price history back here and within here, usually the longest portion of the impulse and the strongest. That's a feature typical of commodities and cryptocurrencies. Within cycle wave three, it must unfold as an impulse and it must meet all core Elliott wave rules. Primary one is complete. Primary two, a very deep 91% correction of primary wave one. Primary three is longer than primary wave one and exhibits strength. It shows an increase in momentum. Primary four looks incomplete and it may not move into wave one price territory below 13796.489 but it probably won't get very near that point because there's usually a pretty big, big gap between the low or support for the fourth wave. It usually remains substantially above the end of the first wave. So the invalidation point's a long way away but I would not expect price to get down that low. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. We're going to look now at the structure of cycle three from this low here this point here, unfolding as an impulse, an impulse for primary wave one. Note also the curved look of Bitcoin's impulses. It's absolutely normal for this market. A zigzag for primary two, an impulse for primary three, not so much of a curved look, and that's okay. It does subdivide very well. And now I'm expecting most likely, but not definitely, this is an exercise in probability, not certainty. I'm expecting the most likely structure for primary four is a triangle. And the most common type of triangle is a regular contracting triangle. So I'll expect the most common type because that has the highest probability may not move into wave one price territory. I've got three charts at the daily chart level looking at three different possible structures so far for primary four. There are more than 23 possible structures a fourth wave can unfold as and so when price is in a correction or consolidation we need to be open-minded and flexible and consider different possibilities and then the idea is to rank them in order of probability. 
Nothing about this is certain. We are dealing with a series of probabilistic statements. It's a really, really important point to wrap your head around. Okay, let's take a look at the first chart where this high here for primary three is this point here. From this high to this low, I've tried several different ways of labeling this and my other wave counts look at it a little bit differently. It looks best as a zigzag with an extended A wave, a quick B wave zigzag, and a short C wave. The only problem, and it's not really much of a problem, is a truncated fifth wave here, minute wave five, did not move beyond the end of three, and so we call that a truncation. As you can see visually, it's not by too much, and in Elliott wave terms, this truncation appears in the correct context. A fifth wave very well, quite rarely, I have only seen one other truncation in Bitcoin's price history, so this would be the second. It can occur after a move which could be described as too far, too fast. And this very strong downward movement for Minute 3, which has strong momentum, I'm using MACD as a guide here, could possibly be described as too far, too fast. So the third wave ends here. The fourth wave is a really good looking regular contracting triangle and the fifth wave a short impulse with a small truncation. This upward movement fits best as a three wave structure, so that's how I want to see it, and here minor wave C could most certainly look pretty good as a five wave structure. This part's starting to get a little bit complicated and difficult. Four of the five subwaves of a triangle must subdivide as a zigzag with only one of them being a multiple zigzag. One of the five subwaves of a triangle doesn't have to be a zigzag or zigzag multiple, it could be a different kind of structure. One of but that's not very common. Most of mostly they're all zigzags with one multiple zigzag. The multiple zigzag most commonly occurs in the D wave position, but it can also be, or it can be any wave, the most common is D and then in order of probability C or B. I want to see intermediate wave B now as a zigzag, and I've relabeled this structure a little bit this week. It fits really nicely as a zigzag. A, B has not moved beyond the start of A, and C unfolding as a five wave impulse with minute one and two, minute three exhibiting an increase in momentum with minuet one and two. I'm seeing this sideways movement, and I've expanded this out so I can look at these movements carefully. I'm seeing this as a double combination. Zigzag for W, subminuet W, quick zigzag for x in the opposite direction, flat correction for y, which ends about the same level as w. I do not want to label this as a, b, c, a running flat, unless we see a really strong upward movement for minuet 3. If that occurs, then I would accept labeling of a running flat in this position, but running flats are pretty rare structures. I've only ever seen about two or three in my research in over, well now, 13 years of daily analysis using Elliott Wave. One of those running flats was on Bitcoin. I have found one in its price history and it did occur in the correct context of a really strong movement. It was a little fourth wave. But this is not in the context of a very strong movement, so I will not accept labeling a running flat unless and until really strong upward movement occurs, which could have pulled the C wave up and made it truncated, not move beyond the end of the A wave. But when I expand this out, this actually looks pretty good as a double combination, zigzag, X, flat correction, and that's the correct context. So again, if you learn nothing else from me but how to spot poor quality Elliott Wave work, look out for overuse of running flats as well. They are extremely rare structures. And in what context is the analyst labelling a running flat? If it's not in the appropriate context, move on. My target for intermediate B is for it to reach about 80% the length of intermediate A at 57,669. This is a very approximate guide only and it's based on research. In my research on gold S&P 500 and Bitcoin, a thorough wave count as far back as I can go, I've looked at the probability of different corrective structures and the lengths of their waves and I found that B waves within triangles range from about 75 to about 85% in length 
most commonly. And so about 80% 80, 80 in length is a reasonable expectation, give or take a range either side of that. When intermediate wave B may be a completed zigzag, I'll then accept expect a zigzag, a single or double zigzag down for C, which may not move beyond the end of A below 28893.621. If we do see a new low by any amount at any time frame, the triangle will be invalidated and then I would switch to this probabilistic pathway. This is the second daily chart, another way of looking at this movement for Bitcoin. Primary wave 4 could be unfolding as a zigzag an impulse for A, still got that little truncated fifth wave, that's okay. A zig, oh, sorry, an expanded flat, I've relabeled this this week as an expanded flat, A, B, C. With B moving beyond the start of A, it's just over a 1.2 length, I think it's a 1.21 length of A. And now C unfolding as a five wave impulse with minute 1, 2, three, four, five. This part of the wave count now actually has a slightly better fit. One, two, three, four, five. And now I can see this is a zigzag and this is a either a zigzag or a flat. Just quickly going back to the last daily chart. This fits okay, but I have to see this as a combination, which means this little piece of upward movement that I've labeled sub X, you'd have to see it as a zigzag at lower time frames. This wave count sees it as an impulse at lower time frames. Now, it could be either, and this is one of the most difficult things about Elliott Wave. I don't have hourly chart uh, data for Bitcoin, so I can't drill down to the hourly chart level and have a check the subdivisions, but you'd probably have to consider both anyway, depending on what degree of label labeling you give each of the little subdivisions within this upward movement on this day. Zigzags and impulses can look very much the same. They're strong movements that usually fit quite well within a reasonably narrow channel. And depending on how you label the little subdivisions within them, you have to consider both possibilities. It's virtually impossible if they sit within that narrow channel to be absolutely certain if it was a zigzag or an impulse. Sometimes you can be really confident that a movement was a zigzag like this movement here. This just would not fit well as all, at all as an impulse. But a movement that looks like an impulse can absolutely certainly possibly be a zigzag. So you have to consider both possibilities. And so this considers this as an impulse. When intermediate B may be a complete flat, A, B, C, then I'd expect a five wave structure down for intermediate C, which for this wave count should make a new low below the end of A to avoid a truncation. It doesn't need to make a new low below these points to avoid a truncation, just this low here. When B is over, then I would apply the Fibonacci ratio between A and C to calculate a target for primary wave 4 for you. And here's the invalidation point. If this wave count is correct and A subdivided as a 5, then B may not move beyond its start above 64863.098. And lastly, a third way of looking at this, a possible double zigzag for intermediate four. Again, when a price is in a correction, we have to be open-minded, flexible, and consider multiple possibilities. It's absolutely impossible at this stage to tell with, with any degree of certainty what structure primary four may be. We have to be flexible. It could be a double zigzag, W, X, Y, with X unfolding as a regular flat, a, B, C. This part of the wave count looks wrong though. A is a 3, B is a 3, it's over 90% the length of A but under 105% the length of A so this would be a regular flat but the bit that looks wrong now is minor wave C. C waves of regular flats are most commonly reasonably close to equal in length with the A wave. It's okay for a C wave within a zigzag to not be equal in length with the A wave, but within a regular flat, they are usually equal, so that the regular flat usually sits fairly well within a trend channel, and this one's just far too long for a normal C wave within a regular flat. And so the probability of this wave counts reasonably low for that problem, and that's why it's labelled my third. I'm putting these daily wave counts, ranking them in order of probability, based on judgement, based on Elliott wave structure. 
let's take a look at classic analysis now and see how much support or lack thereof is for that Elliott wave analysis. At the weekly chart level this week, we get an important bullish signal from on balance volume. This trend line has a pretty shallow slope, it's reasonably long held, and it has multiple tests, four tests. A break above resistance is a bullish signal. I'll be expecting more upward movement from price to likely follow. And so next resistance is about 60,000, but there's a little bit of a cluster of resistance not shown on this chart because it's not as strong below 60,000, so that may be a bit optimistic. I would be expecting some more upward movement, but not necessarily right up to this resistance line. Volume is declining though for the last couple of completed upward weeks, which is a little bit of a concern, but at this low here, this bullish engulfing candlestick pattern did have support from volume, and so we can have some reasonable confidence that this is a fairly sustainable low, but with volume declining, that's a bit of a concern. RSI is in neutral territory, plenty of room for upward movement to continue. ADX declining after the previous upward trend up to this all-time high for Bitcoin, reaching very extreme up to about 70. No clear trend at this time frame indicated. The positive DX lines crossed above the negative, but there's been a bit of whipsawing. ATR declining as price moves higher, there's a little bit of weakness in upward movement, but if you look back at the price history of Bitcoin, that is actually often a feature of the early stages of a new bull market for it, so on its own, this is not necessarily bearish. And stochastic's still neutral. At the daily chart level, next resistance about 50,000, so I'm showing weaker resistance here for the shorter term. There, we may have a morning star candlestick pattern in these three. After a little pullback, this may indicate that we may have a low in place. This supports the Elliott wave counts, so look for resistance about 50,000. ADX was increasing, and it's above the DX lines, telling us there it was an upward trend, but it was extreme, just not near as extreme as it can get for this market. But it's now declining, but if price is going to continue on up, if the ADX line turns up, then again, an upward trend would be indicated again. And it would already be extreme, but that can be sustained for a long time for this market while price moves a substantial distance. On balance volume broke above resistance, tested support, another test of support. This is bullish, supports the Elliott wave count. RSI exhibited weak double bearish divergence between these peaks here in price and RSI and then we see a little pullback that may actually have been enough to resolve that short-term divergence with RSI. I say that only because it was reasonably weak so we could certainly see new highs from Bitcoin soon. Stochastics neutral and ATR slowly increases in the short term as price rises. That's all for me this week with your Bitcoin analysis and I hope that everyone's having a fabulous day.